us. And so we want to we want to change those paradigms, um, help people get the right information at the right time, and help people know where to go and when to go, and learn how to advocate for themselves. And also, we is in the spirit of advocating collectively. And so um, we've had a big budget meeting where we had the director uh, uh, of uh, Jenny Reed. We've had, uh, who else we had? We had council member Phil Mendelson there. We had a number of government people explaining the budget process some things you wanted to see happen in the budget for Ward 8. Um, residents gave input on things they want to have, have in Ward 8. Um, and we came up with like a collective list um, that we're going to submit to the mayor. Um, but we want to make sure even in that, we have to come to the hearings, speak up for ourselves because no one is coming to save us but us. And as an old saying, if you're not at the table, then you're on the menu. And so we got to get off the menu. You got to get active. We got to use those voices, use that intelligence, use our advocacy to get involved. And so I'll digress and turn the floor over to our own president of the Water Democrats, Mr. Tory Presswood. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Well, thank you, Councilmember White. And I just want to thank you and praise you for your leadership on this. I remember it was a couple of months ago, like you said, that we uh, came in contact with one another and just saying, hey, what are we doing about the budget process here in Ward 8? How can we help our residents get prepared for these upcoming budget hearings that are very, very important? Um, as you know, the Ward 8 Democrats back in November actually had a budget session with some council staffers. And then we also talked to members of the community about what they uh, think is important about this upcoming budget fiscal year 24. And so, uh, you know, we talked about that, but then I think uh, most importantly, council member, uh, you know, it was it was your leadership uh, in, in saying let's team up on this so that we can ensure that we're bringing the resources to our residents. Um, so I, with that being said, I will say welcome to our joint discussion with council member Treyon White on how to get prepared for the upcoming DC budget hearings. I want to, again, thank council member for his leadership, uh, and I also want to thank his staff, many of whom are here today, uh, for their efforts as well. And if I can advise staff, Wanda in particular, definitely want to thank Wanda uh, for all of her efforts as well. And Wanda, if you see uh, folks from the Ward 8 Democrats, uh, Sheila Bunn and Michael Greer, if you can promote them to co-host. Um, uh, so they're able to unmute themselves. That would be great since I can't really see everybody at this point. So this workshop will help you gather your thoughts, your ideas, and help you think about where the facts are to help you make your case before the DC Council. Now we'll show you various ways you can testify and to provide downloadable templates, something that I think is very important. It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to say, oh, there's a tangible takeaway that we'll have at the conclusion of this workshop, something you can do to get started. So you don't want to miss this important part of our democracy. Now, our aim here is to remove the guesswork out of the process. You heard the council member mention that earlier to help you uh, let you know where the people and the resources are that can help you prepare for these hearings. It may seem hard, but it really is quite simple. And to be honest with you, and to be fair, it was more difficult in the past. It's a lot easier now because you can do a lot of this virtually. Um, and there's also other ways that you can testify as well. So we're gonna to get to some of that right now. Tonight, we have teams from both the council member's office and from the Ward 8 Democrats. From the Ward 8 Democrats, we have Sheila Bunn, who is our first vice president and an experienced council staffer. She will help discuss some of the things you should consider when you are testifying before the council. And then we have Michael Greer. He's the co-chair of our Issues and Legislative Affairs Committee. He'll take a few minutes to tell you how the district's overall budget process works and why as soon, as soon as we're done with fiscal year 24's budget, it's time to start thinking and planning about fiscal year 25. So if we're ready to get started, uh, I'm ready to get started. So do we have 
with what eight dams team in in the place i see so Bunny is here michael greer has not signed in yet okay so he sent me a text that he was trying to get on hopefully he will <laughs> okay all right so let's get started um all right so the mayor is expected to transmit a nearly 20 billion dollar budget to the dc council later this month in the budget we will you know, this budget will fund all of the very key and important services that we come to expect and to enjoy. Services like police and fire emergency services, schools, transportation, like pothole work and metro, safety net programs like Medicaid, food stamps, um, low income housing services, all of that's in the budget, recreation centers, libraries. I know that's very important to Councilmember White, for example, uh, the new hospital that's coming to our to our ward salaries, all of that uh, for government workers is also in the budget. And the list goes on and on and on. So as you recall, back a few months ago in February, well, not a few months ago, I guess it was last month, February, the mayor held a series of engagement budget hearings around the city. Eastern High School was the one that was close to us. And uh, we talked about if you went there, you had a chance to talk about what your priority areas were. You got to meet other people from around the city as well. And uh, that that process is now over. The, they're crunching those numbers now, and they're about to move that process to the council for a series of hearings, so the council members can learn if something should be changed, if something should be moved around or cut from the mayor's budget. So your voice matters in this process. Um, and so I want to ask members of council member staff who I know are here, um, if there's anything that you all want to add to that as we talk about the budget oversight hearing schedule and what the uh, activities are and the key dates coming up this coming uh, month and into April. I can jump in here real quick. Everyone, my name is Richard Grant and I am privileged to serve as legislative director for council member White. Um, and just as Troy said, the mayor is going to submit the budget um, on March 22nd. However, typically it is transmitted a little bit late, which means that all the dates um, are moved up a little bit as committees uh, jockey for new dates in a very short period of time. If it is submitted late, the dates that we um, provide to uh, may be subject to change. So we ask just, just take a look at it around that time to make sure. Uh, but we'll know definitely on March 22nd if she sends it or not. Um, just a little overview of the budget process in general. So the mayor sends a budget that already um, has, has decided on certain priorities and any changes to that budget means that the entire budget has to be changed. So say for instance, if you have $20 million somewhere and you wanna move it to someplace else, or you wanna get $20 million, you have to take it from something. So the question is not just about how much money it takes to accomplish a certain goal, but it's also about how that goal, um, how that goal is viewed by the decision makers that are gonna make the decision about whether or not a certain program or, or budgetary decision should be made. So between March 22nd and May 3rd is the, I mean, May 30th, uh, we, it's supposed to be the entirety of the budget process. So around May 30th, the council is supposed to be voting um, on the budget and the, the legal measures that support the budget. In between, the chairman will assign to the committees um, different sections of the budget in which they can analyze. One significant part of that is that if you're interested in the work of a certain committee, you want to look at the date that that committee has something called markup, which is one word. Markup is um, really on a committee level. It's, it's where the committees make decisions, um, kind of make final decisions before they vote out. And so well before markup, you want to look at um, what the priorities of that committee are and what they intend what they intend to do and you want to reach out to those committee members if you suspect that um, they're not doing what you want them to do. Uh, so by May 30th, 
we should be done, but typically we kind of go into the summer. So I would expect that around the end of June, beginning of July is closer to a um, actual end date for the budget. Special issues in the budget this year. Uh, one thing that's really big for everyone who's interested in the school committees uh, or in education in general is that um, the mayor's team, the executive team uh, said they were unable to uh, fully fund the schools as required by district law. Um, and right now we don't understand or we're, we're not privy to the relationships between the individual schools and the mayor about how they're rectifying or if they're rectifying that situation. So I would look um, to uh, Chairman Mendelson and to others in the education committee and see if there's anything that's being done. I know in Ward 8, I believe all the middle school budgets were cut um, and every high school except Blue State was cut. Um, Kyle, who's, who's our colleague, uh, he can speak better to that. I know he's compiled a lot of good data there. But that's something uh, to be especially to be especially on the lookout for this budget season. I think that's all. That's all I got. And at the end, of course, we'll be available to answer questions. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Cal, your name was evoked. Did you want to speak? Um, Richard um, said a lot. I was going to say um, to to what I would say. Um, yeah, as far as the schools are concerned. Um, I'll pull it up to have the exact numbers, but um, yes, all the middle schools, all three middle schools in Ward 8 were cut and all, but I think Baloo itself, not Baloo State. I think Baloo State was cut, but Baloo High School was not. Um, and so more than half of Ward 8 schools overall had their budgets cut, but I'll have the, the full number and put it in the chat in a couple of minutes. Got it. And I see we've been joined by Sheila Bunn, well, we were. Uh, by Sheila Bunn, who is our first vice president. Oh, there she is. Our first vice president of the Ward 8 Democrats. Sheila, welcome. Anything you wanted to add to the conversation that we've had been having so far just about how we are kicking off uh, the budget oversight season? Um, I think Rich and Kyle um, pretty much covered it. Um, good evening uh, to my Ward 8 neighbors. I um, just want to encourage um, everyone um, to take the information that you learned tonight and use it in your upcoming testimony. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more when we get to my section. I um, just want to say um, it's a busy time down at the council, and absolutely we need to hear everyone's voices. Um, the budget is um, what many call a moral document about what your values are, um, and if we want this budget to reflect our values, then we need to give our input into it. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I do know that Michael Greer, our co-chair of issues and legislative affairs is also here as well, Michael. And you just wave it up to the people. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, uh, you want muted? Yeah, um, I, 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 um, I know I'm going to be speaking a little bit later as well, I believe, um, about uh, the budget process and kind of how we're looking at uh, issues that we're facing today, as well as the issues that we're, we believe that we're going to be facing tomorrow. So I would encourage, um, I know uh, Rich talked a little bit about um, if we do have to make some decisions and make some tough decisions in the budget, um, uh, we have to take money from somewhere else and look at reprior uh, kind of reprioritizing our um, activities that we're looking at for FY24, um, which would again take effect October 1 of this year. Um, but speaking to um, where we're going in uh, October 1 in 2024, there are still some opportunities there so that we can begin laying the groundwork and making sure that uh, your priorities here in Ward 8 are going to be met in a long term. And so I'm looking forward to having that opportunity just to present, uh, talk a little bit about the future of where we're going. And so um, definitely want to say that we uh, we know that the FY24 budget to Rich's point to other, I mean, I know the council member made is going to be some tough decisions. We're going to have to figure out where we're going and where we're moving money um, for the FY24 budget, but there is always time and we're always looking to the future here in Ward 8. And so uh, we need to also in this context be thinking about FY25. Just a pl quick plug there for what I'm going to talk about a little bit in the future. Well, 
Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Sheila. And I think Sheila mentioned values that the budget it really it really is a showcase, or it is it's a it's a it's the end result of what our values are, what the things that we want to invest in, the values, if you will, for that fiscal year. So building off of that, what you need to know is, and we put this on the screen right now, you've already heard Rich and Kyle and others talk about how on Wednesday, the 22nd, the mayor is supposed to transmit that budget to uh, the council. Th that date may hold, it, it It may move. I think last year, I remember it, it moved because there were a lot, there was a lot going on. Obviously last year, we're still in the middle of COVID. Uh, but uh, that is the date, at least right now, that's on the, that's on the calendar. And then the following day, if if this uh, calendar holds, then uh, the the committee of the whole will hold a public briefing uh, on that mayor's budget and financial plan. And then at some point uh, to uh, moving into early part of April, um, there be hearings, uh, and and then there will also be markups. You heard markups earlier. Markups is actually when they can when they will take the bill and mark it up, or the budget in this case and mark it up. And then at some point there be votes on it. So this is a, this is at least a working time frame for you right now uh, to think through what the process is going to be like. Uh, as you see, this is what we call budget season, um, and uh, we want to make sure that you're prepared for what we need to do. So, Mr. I, President, you yeah. have a hand up, Shilabun. Oh, if you have okay. questions. Please raise your hand and we will recognize you and you can come off of mute or you can put your questions in the chat. Sheila. Thank you, Ms. Wanda. I'm um, Troy just wanted to extra highlight that March 24th date, that committee of the whole public briefing, that briefing is with the mayor. Um, she will testify before the council. I'm talking about the budget that she submitted. So that is an that is a really good opportunity for folk to hear from her how she formulated her budget and what value she put behind that budget. So we just wanted to flag that date as well. Um, she drops on the 22nd, but would encourage folk to watch that hearing because the mayor will be there in person, um, at least for the first two rounds typically, and then if she doesn't stay for the entire session, the city administrator um, stays to answer um, council questions. So just wanted to flag that for folks as well. Got it, thank you, Sheila. So the next thing here, I always say, well, how do you, how, before you can even start this whole process, before you can Co testify before you can, you know, make sense of all of this. You have to find the why. Like, why am I even doing this? I hear, and I know all of us do, but we hear from people all the time who say, our voice don't matter. You know, I vote for people, they don't do what they say they're going to do, or, or whatever. We, we hear that all the time. And so I always say, well, you know, it's it, it it does matter. It's a democracy, which means it can be messy, right? It's a republic democracy. It can be messy. So that means not everything always goes the way we want, but you still got to be in the game because if not, then as people say, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So I always say, start with your why. What's your why? Like, why, why, why do you want to do this? What's the issue that is um, that is animating you? to want to get engaged in the budget process. And everyone has a why. And that's why I think we should start there with what is your why? Because then everything else flows from that. And so when we think about the why, okay, come on slide. Um, here are two things here that I think stand out to me. What your why is a statement of purpose that describes why you do the work that you do why you live the life that you do. It's your calling, it's your conviction, it's your mission statement. Uh, another one that says it gives you a strong sense of purpose and well-being. It helps to crystallize your personal mission statement so that you can develop more confidence and make a positive impact on people's lives. And that's the last piece there about people's lives. That's what we wanna do. It's either your life or it's the life of your community. So it's, it's about finding your why. You know, for some people, their why is different from others. Um, you know, some is about having peace of mind. You know, for me, you know, that that could be a really big thing. My why is peace of mind. For others, it could be about our children. It could be about our seniors. 
education, safety. It could be your parents. You know, some people say, well, my why is my parents. I want to make sure my parents have what they need in order to, you know, be successful or grow older uh, and, and be safe and secure. Uh, for some people, the why could be the next generation. I want to make sure the next generation is prepared for the future. Whatever your why is, it should be your guidepost. Uh, and not just for the council pr testifying process, but really in life. What is your why? Start with your why. Uh, the D.C. Fiscal Policy Institute, they had on their blog how to testify before the council. And, and one of the things they were saying was, you know, you write your testimony out. Um, actually, before I go there, let me let me go here instead of ways of testifying. So once you find your why, whatever your why is, you have several on ramps to to get engaged in the process. We already talked about what the schedule is. We'll look a little bit at what uh, some of these particular hearings that are coming up. We'll take a look at them. It's a lot, but it's not hard. It's just that you need to find out what your why is and have your why aligned to the actual council hearing. It's really that simple. Uh, but the ways that you can testify, written, obviously, we're going to go over some writing techniques to do that. And we have a template for you as well that we'll give you so that when you leave here, you have it. Uh, there's voicemail technology that you can use. No, most people don't know that you can actually call a number, leave a voice message, and that voice message will become a written transcript that will be part of the record. And then, of course, there is the virtual meetings. Right now, I think the councils mostly meet, have a testimony being done virtually, either on Zoom or WebEx. And that's a great opportunity, especially if you live here in Ward 8. We always complain about how it takes so much to get down to the Wilson building. And once you get there, if you're driving, you got to find parking. And if you're Metro and you got to figure out what stop to get off at, all of that stuff. They've made it a lot easier for us, everyone. So you can now, most of the testimony is done virtually. And the great news is that because of law, if you need interpretation services like closed captioning, if you need uh, Spanish, if, 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 a, if you have, speak another language, uh, or if you know your neighbor that speaks another language but should be a part of the process, there is, there is a way to do that for them. They do have you know, some time frames of how soon to get that to them so they can get someone, but they do want you to, they don't want the language to be a barrier to your testimony. And then of course, very important, regardless of what way that you testify, it's important that you get your testimony in by the deadline, because once the record closes, legally, it's done. And your testimony that comes in after that will be too late. So I'm going to pause there in case there are any questions um, from the community. And then we want to go uh, and talk a little bit more after that about, you know, the the process for how you, um, again, the written testimony piece, the, te the voicemail part, the virtual piece, we want to start to break that out for you a little more, demystifying that so that you're able to understand how you can do it and how you can do it very easily. So I'll pause in case there's any questions. Um, before we move into that or any other comments i would say as well from the team i don't so have um, just yet and i went in for the game to, to get dressed and, and I... okay all right um sheila so is did you want me to share the tips here or are we doing that later we can you can do it here it's fine Okay, let me lower my hand and get to my document. Um, so Sto Troy stole some of my thunder um, in terms of talking about um, the different ways um, that you can testify. But again, um, I'll go over them again, but just briefly for those who may not be familiar with the process, um, just a little education. When a bill or a proposed resolution is introduced um, at the council, the chairman, typically refers it to a committee to consider whatever that policy um, is what, um, to analyze the fiscal impact and to determine whether or not there's an effect on existing law and make any um, needed recommendations by the council. Um, so that referral is done by the chairman. Um, if it's an easy referral, typically it goes to one committee sometimes 
um, it is a piece of legislation can be duly referred to more than one committee. So you'll have to uh, pay attention to that as well. Um, and typically after that referral, the committee with jurisdiction will schedule a public hearing and the notices about those hearings are published in the DC register. Um, anyone can sign up to testify as long as you meet the qualifications set forth by that particular committee of jurisdiction. As Troy said, there are several ways to testify. The most prominent one is in person um, and during the pandemic and now pre post pandemic um, that can either be virtual or in person. Um, some committees are holding in person hearings, while others um, are completely virtual or they are hybrid. Um, the second way is written testimony, of course. And then, as Troy said, um, something new that we innovated during the pandemic is voicemail testimony. So, those are three different ways that you can testify, and we've seen during the pandemic that doing uh, having the virtual hearings as well as the voicemail allow for us to hear from more of our neighbors um, across the district on important, on important issues. All testimony, whether it's in person, written or by voicemail is made a part of the hearing record. And typically the hearing record closes two weeks after the hearing. But again, pay close attention to the hearing notice um, to determine that closing date. So three tips that I wanna give you on testifying in person. Most committees limit uh, in-person testimony um, to three minutes. So you have three minutes to say all that you have to say about a particular issue. But typically when you write testimony, we never write to three minutes. Um, so my advice would be to write your longer written statement, but use your three minutes to hit those top two or three points that you want the council member to know. Um, you can tell them your life story and the entire story in your written testimony, but in that those three minutes be succinct and let them know specifically what you want them to know, why you're there to testify, what those two to three hot topics are. Before you testify, you've never testified before, practice, practice, practice. Write your testimony, set a three minute timer, um, practice with a friend or practice on a Zoom with a friend, however you wanna do it, but practice beforehand so that you get comfortable with giving that three minute testimony. And depending on how many witnesses there are for a hearing, some committee chairs, um, if they have a lot of testimony to take, they stick to that three minutes and you will get cut off. Um, especially on the uh, virtual platforms, most committees have a timer up. So when that three minutes goes, they'll say, excuse me, sir, excuse me, ma'am, your time is up. Please summarize and move on. Um, if there are fewer folks testifying, some, some committee chairs will give you extra time, but please know that the standard time is three minutes for individuals, or if you are representing an organization, you'll have five minutes. So again, be concise. After you give your testimony, please know that some council members, some committee uh, chairs and the members of that committee may have questions for you. It doesn't happen all the time, but majority of the time, council members will ask you questions about your testimony. Um, maybe they need some clarification. Uh, maybe you provided um, an interesting idea that they want inf more information on, but please be prepared to receive questions um, following your testimony. And again, um, some folks make extemporaneous testimony, but please follow that up. If you don't have a written statement at the time of your testimony, please provide one for the record. And in, in the case of being in person in the Wilson Building, if you testify, typically you'll need to bring 13 copies of your testimony. Um, if you want to do in person so that while you're testifying, the council members can kind of read your testimony as they're listening um, to your verbal testimony. And I think uh, uh, one last thing I want to stress, if you need language translation or sign language interpretation, that is provided at no cost um, by the council, but we do ask that you notify the committee 
um, well in advance or as much notice as you can give, but not later than five business days prior to the committee hearing, just so that um, the council has time to secure the language interpreter or the sign language interpreter. And lastly, um, not everyone is um, has equitable access to the internet or is not necessarily tech savvy. So if the internet or you know computers is not your thing and you want a copy of any piece of legislation that is introduced um, in the council, you can contact our legislative services division. That number is 202-724-8054. Again, that's 202-724-8050. They are located in room 10 of the Wilson Building. If you just happen to be down at the Wilson Building in person, you can stop in and ask for whatever piece of legislation you're looking for. You can call if you're not able to come to the building. And if you are um, tech savvy, you can go on the council's website, dccouncil.gov. We've switched from .us, we are now officially .gov, so dccouncil.gov. And on the, web, on the council's website, there's a section that says legislation or limbs, and you can search any piece of legislation there to get background information in preparation for your testimony. Thank you, Troy. I think that's all I have open to questions, and I will stay on if there are additional questions later on. Um, real quick, can you repeat that number? I want to put it in the chat, the legislative service for the team. Sure. It's 202-724-8050, Legislative Services Division at the Council. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Michael, you're welcome. Michael Greer has his hand raised. Michael. Thanks, Wanda. Um, I... Uh, I would just say, uh, just say, Sheila, um, of course, amazing job. <laughs> um, I would just say, uh, we are here to serve you at the Ward 8 Dems. Um, Sheila made a great point about uh, practicing with someone, your testimony, and making sure that someone listens to, uh, listens to your testimony. Um, I have, uh, it has been my privilege in the past to serve you all um, on the executive side of, of the house. And so it is, um, uh, something that I've had to do before in preparing testimony before. And I am here to continue to serve you as a member of the Ward 8 Democrats. And so if you need someone to practice, I would encourage you to email, it's info at ward8dems.com, I believe, or um, you can uh, reach out to Troy or any of the Ward 8 Democrats. Um, they all have my number. They all have uh, my email address. They all have my contact information. I am happy to look at what you write. If it's a paragraph, four sentences, whatever you have, if you need some help writing something, I am happy to sit with you and make sure that we get something coherent and we really articulate uh, what you have in the interest that you or even your constituents have. I know there are some ANC commission commissioners on here. Um, I have had the privilege to testify before council before in the Ward 8 Democrats capacity, as well as on the executive side. And so we are, ha I'm happy to utilize that to serve you all in Ward 8 um, and continue that service. And so use, you, you have the resource, um, call us, email us, Text us, whatever it needs, send smoke signals. I am I mean, we in Anacostia, we not fall, we'll see them. Um, we will serve you and we'll make sure that you have your voice and it is heard at the council um, and anywhere else that it, it, um, it can be heard uh, to make sure that you are impacting the budget. Um, and then one last thing I would also add, um, I know some people are messaging and saying, well, I have this really big complex issue that may cross multiple committees. Um, that is okay. Um, you can sit, put, submit the same testimony or testify before multiple committees. That is perfectly fine. Um, council members sit on multiple committees. Um, your issue may span multiple committees, but one committee ultimately has jurisdiction over the budget of that agency. And so uh, you need to find out kind of who's the biggest player in that pie. Um, and you want to definitely make sure you testify there but there's no problem in testifying before multiple committees. So if you have an issue such as housing, um, housing can touch uh, DHS, housing can touch DBH, housing can touch DACL. It can touch a number of it, the housing authority. 
There are a number of agencies across DC government that that touches, but you need to find out based upon your issue, who has the biggest swath of that. Um, and again, that is something we will sit down with you and help you figure out. Um, and we will make sure that it gets to the right place and you get in front of the right people so that your issue is again heard and that you get the risk um can make sure that your uh people are listening to you that can actually impact the change that you want to see that was awesome michael shilly you have your hand up again is is there another question or okay go right ahead so i um, wanted to piggyback on what michael said um in terms of making sure that our message is heard i also want folks to i also want to encourage folks to be in touch with Councilmember White's office in terms of what his priorities are for the ward. When we go down to the council to testify, we wanna make sure that we're in line with the council member and that we are sending um, a strong message about what we want in Ward 8. We wanna amplify the council member's message. We wanna make sure that the council, his colleagues hear that these are our priorities. Um, so, and I know the council member held a budget form a few weeks ago. I know he'll be sending, if he hasn't already sent up his budget letter to the mayor. So we wanna make sure that we understand what his priorities are on behalf of us. And when we testify that we are also testifying on those priorities so that the, his colleagues keep hearing those same messages around what's important to us. Yeah, that's very important. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I remember some years ago when I was a commissioner, you know, one of the things that we were fighting for was a rec center. And we were fighting for that rec center before uh, Council Member White was elected. And, and when we went, and it didn't go anywhere, but when we got when Councilmember White was elected, you know, and, and we he was on the same page, the community was on the same page, young people who we kept talking to were all on the same page. And once we all were saying, speaking from the same hymnal, we were like, okay, now it's time to get all the other council members on board as well. So that's exactly um, how the process should work. And I'm so glad you mentioned, uh, Sheila, that the council member actually held a uh, budget forum uh, for the ward a few weeks ago. Uh, where folks can do the same thing folks did with the mayor, which is they can come and talk exactly, talk to the council member and uh, express the types of uh, priorities that they believe should be in our ward. And, and trust me, I've seen that the council member has, fight, has uh, fought for it, fought for them in the past. He's going to fight for them in the present. But we have to be the army. We have to be the foot soldiers, um, you know, sending those emails, testifying, making sure they know Ward 8 is what in the house. Uh, in the building. It is not enough for him to fight alone. He can he can definitely do it, but we have to back him up on it. And so that's exactly why this is important. And, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Uh, Councilmember White, did you want to actually speak to any of that before we move on to our next topic? Uh, yes, I think if we can, I don't know if we have that pulled up yet, our letter. Um, if someone can access that, I'm not sure who has the sharing capacity on the Zoom, but that'd be helpful. Um, it's, it was pretty lengthy this year. And mind you, I'm just going to say this in full transparency. We're trying to overpack what we have in the budget because we are facing some financial difficulties down the line. Um, and so sometimes you got to put the foot to the, put the pedal to the metal, um, just in case we, we don't benefit as much as we want to, uh, five, six years from now. Right. And so if someone can grab that and put that up, uh, we can work through that. Um, and while we're waiting, does anyone have any questions? Cause we want to have some dialogue tonight as well, before we go to the next speaker. I know Rich has his hand up, Rich. Yeah, I just want to jump in real quick to speak to uh, some of the testimony that I observe and just a general uh, guidance. I think some of the, uh, like Sheila, for instance, has kind of touched on it, but I think it's really important. When you're testifying about anything, not just in the budget, but especially, you know, things that tend to be hot button. Uh, although you may personally feel very strongly about individual people and their actions, the I think the most effective testimony occurs when you attack um, an issue and you explain 
the impact that that issue has and a possible solution. So when you measure the impact, the more people that's impacted or affected by something that's going on, I think that's the, the, the testimony will be more effective. Um, but if there are people um, or council members that you, that you don't like, um, attacking them personally really does not help in terms of accomplishing policy change. <laughs> Excellent point there. Well, Richard, were you or Cal able to put up the letter? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna work on that behind the scenes. Uh, I'm not a panelist, but I'm, I'm gonna get the letter and uh, send, send it to whoever it needs to go to. My apologies. My, my big boy got my, my phone. Apologies. Um, Council Member, which letter are you looking for? I'll let it to the mayor. Okay, I'll pull it up. There's a question for Mary as we're waiting for that. Uh, Mary, you unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. Uh, Council member, my concern primarily is this, are the schools in now Ward 8? And I understand that, I'm not sure this is still true or not because recently I've been so occupied with something because I haven't kept up with everything. Uh, if the schools, if they lose students, if their budgets are, are cut, uh, because there's one school that my niece is headed to where they have lost 200 students, I understand, the past several years, which means that budget is probably pretty dry by now. So that's what I'm most interested in, the budget not being cut for awarded schools, even though they're losing people. Thank you. Um, so part of the issue is that the council passed legislation where budgets are not supposed to drop. Um, and it's rightfully understood if budgets drop because of you, you you're not going to fund a, same, a school that has 1200 people the same school that has 600 people right um but the reality is there are schools who had the same or projected more students but their budget too was cut and that's problematic in the student per pupil uh, funding formula um and so there was i mean about 10 years ago the conversation was about um, school consolidation and bringing more kids into one building to over resource the school. And there was really no return on that investment. And so we're trying to use our power at the council to fit, get that fixed before it get over to us. And hopefully it does, because it's hard to move that amount of money late in the game. I think there's over 70 schools on the list. Um, and I see that uh, Kyle put the ward A schools in the budget and we, we fighting for all schools because we know that there are students that's in war seven and eight that navigate all throughout the city to get an education. And so we wanna make sure that um, our residents are represented all across the district. You know, like if you don't have a strong education system then we are really doomed to fail. And, and also we must understand that this has been a significant uh, learning gap that has increased during the pandemic and so not only we are not on track, we actually got to play catch up. Um, and the data reflects that our, our um, literacy uh, and math uh, achievement levels have been declining, um, especially during the pandemic. So thank you, Ms. Buckley, for that. Um, I'm not sure if you're, did you say daughter, granddaughter? No, niece. Niece, sorry. Well, is on that list, but we'll check it. If someone can speak to this. So I seen something go up on the screen. Um, it's, how many pages is this, Wanda? And if we can fill this. Nine, huh? nine pages. Nine pages. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be pretty lengthy to go so, through now. So just to get a glance of some of the things in terms of education um, with the budget. Kyle, if you can assist us with this, this or Rich, who's who's controlling the screen, Wanda? I am. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So the middle schools, we're not going to go through it all, just some highlights. We barred um, early college. We had connect buses for our students for safe passage, increased investment for STEM, investment into before and after care for the youth is vital and then there's a whole description of why we're asking for these things and a lot of this obviously came from the budget meetings that we had with the council member invest um, 
increasing salaries for learning, early learning program directors, out of school time program need to enhance our youth um, safe passage. Also, we're asking for $7 million in that category, $4 million in creating additional safety zone areas around our schools. Investment for alternate vocational high schools. We need to bring those back. We're asking for $6 million in literacy training for our teachers, creating new teaching opportunities at UDC. Again, we can send this letter out. That was a $300 million ask there and $4 million in technology infrastructure and DCPS. I'm creating pilot programs for activity buses. That's a $2.5 million ask. Park and Rec, we're asking um, for Furby Hope to be refurbished back at a $10, $10 million ask. Uh, what happened there at Furby Hope? We're asking for the facilities that's been promised at Ox and Run to be created at a $3.5 million outdoor fitness center and bathroom. We're also asking for construction for Fort Gravel. There was money put in the budget, but not enough. We're asking for another $4 million there. Duke Ellington Field, we're asking for $2 million to uh, renovate the Ellington Field there. And we go on down to Marvin Gaye Rec Center, RFK. Again, I won't read it all. We can send this out, but that's a $20 million ask. We're asking to increase investment in teen programs, $5 million there. Also, to continue those long hours that the mayor just announced, we want to make sure that continues. So we're asking for $8 million there. Increase weekend access to our pools when it's most important when our kids can access that. That's an additional $2 million that we're asking. We're asking to construct a new senior wellness center, and that's a $45 million ask. Um, and we'll go down to one of the things that we heard a lot of was picket ball. I mean, that overwhelmed our committee hearings this year. So we're asking um, the mayor to put $1.5 million in that to begin to expand that activity. And more recreational centers here, um, sports and tennis and wrestling and boxing. We asking, I mean, you all may remember the, um, the tennis player that won, and he played on a small field. So we ask him to make sure because our kids, they play tennis as well. And um, we're getting down to the seventh page. We're asking for, we heard this through our hearings as well as through our meetings, $25 million for a new library to support the Brightwood uh, Minor Park communities in Ward 4. Um, Shepherd Park, Juanita Thor Thornton, Shepherd Park Library in Ward 4. Four, five million dollars there, and libraries and Ward five, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar acts there, and then we go down to just a new facility for our youth. We heard a lot from our youth during our hearing. The council member held a youth hearing a couple of weeks ago, right after the budget meeting, and we heard loud and clearly from what they need. So we're asking two point five million dollars for that facility. Um, and let me go down to business economic development, $800,000 to increase the investment. Council member had investment last year, $250,000 that supported, I believe it was 25 businesses, but this year we want to try to do 100 small businesses um, with that $800,000, $1 million for teenage homelessness. Yes, sir. Did I hear someone? Okay, I'm gonna go right, I'm gonna move on down to public works. Um, you want me to speak one? I don't want you to get tired. I can jump in if you want to. <laughs> Help yourself, sir. All right. Um, public works, we want to expand. Uh, we are renaming Good Hope Road. Um, and I know with the leadership of the chairman, uh, Commissioner White, also um, the other commissioners there, um, including uh, Robin, um, we talked about putting $10 million and transforming that community. Um, so that's in the budget as well. Um, $100,000 create a partnership to remove and replant uh, Hertz's trees in problematic areas. Um, $2 million to create a standalone DGS unit for DCPS and DPR. Um, we, we know that a lot of our repairs in our schools are becoming dilapidated and just built up in the pipeline of all the requests through DGS. And as we know, DGS, uh, control, DGS oversee the repairs of all government buildings, libraries, 
schools, recreation centers, government buildings, um, and they're responsible for a lot of the new construction projects. So it's a big agency that's backed up in demands for repairs. Um, so we wanted to do that. Oh, public safety support, um, violence interrupters, and DCPS. In fact, I met with um, Deputy Mayor Apia yesterday about uh, some new strategies and initiatives around coordination for violence prevention um, in, in Ward 8. She's the new Deputy Mayor for Public Safety. Um, she and I seem to be on the, on, the, on the same page. I'm glad that that's a good thing. We don't have to tussle and fight as hard, but so that that's in the makings. Um, so uh, 50,000 support the work um, that the committee is doing for the Martin Luther King parade that happens uh, every year in Ward 8. Um, the next topic is mental and physical health. Um, we did good. We, we did get the urgent care facility in the ward already that's up and running. So if you haven't been, it's there on MLK. There's, we also got the ward eight, uh, got the uh, Cedar Hill uh, Hospital getting done in ward eight on St. Louis East Campus. Uh, shout out to Council Member Vincent Gray, also Mayor Bowser. Um, so that's underway. Investment into programs to provide mental health support for parents and adults and community members. Um, that's critical as we deal with the trauma, um, the neglect, um, the anxiety, um, of the just that happens each and every day. And not just for our young people, for our adults as well, because kids become adults. Um, investment to bring in more pharmacies, drugstore, medical, dental, also once they holistic um services we have one on south capital that's in jeopardy of going out of business so we're trying to um support that business as well um where are we six million in support for individuals and families earning 30 percent or less of the median family income uh for income proportion of inclusionary zoning uh, we did, uh, I did a walkthrough today of 17 Mississippi Avenue, which is artist housing. That will be opening soon in Ward 8. They're about to open probably in the next couple of weeks. So there are some alternative housing going up. And I think that's every, I think the building is less than 50% AMI from what I remember today. Um, and they are looking for more people to move in. I think it's 46 units. They have 21 commitments already. Um, where are we? 15 million for additional funds for permanent supportive housing vouchers. Uh, I, even while we were doing a walkthrough at this art house today, we had a couple walk up and the common theme is I've been on the waiting list forever. He says since 2010 to get access to a voucher but have not got any call. Um, and so we are working with DHS, uh, DC Housing Authority and our executive branch to figure out how we can get people housed in quality, healthy living environments and also money to fix up the, the older properties that are falling apart uh, and, and um, becoming uninhabitable. We've also had a number of fires in the community and with some of these properties, at least four properties uh, have suffered significant fire damage. Um, so we wanna use some funds to help get those back up and get residents back situated with those. Um, I think that's it. Um, anybody got any questions about any of those? Council member, I don't have a question about it, but I think it's a very broad list. I think it's rather great, I like it. Um, and, and I saw that uh, Michael Greer or uh, Commissioner White had asked about the movement of the clinics on Good Hope Road to St. Elizabeth. And uh, Michael Greer said that we should uh, perhaps put that in the budget request. Um, I know this is something quite new, this request, but do you think that should go into the budget request or if because the mayor supported it publicly, 
<laughs> with, her work, with her wrote that uh, uh, maybe it can be done, even though it's not in the budget request on your letter there, because it's just sort of a new yeah. So we sent a separate letter um, about the community's intention to move that to uh, the campus of United Medical Center. We were hoping to get on United Medical Center uh, board meeting last month. That didn't happen. Um, and so we try, we forced to get it on this month's agenda. I'm not sure if that was confirmed or not yet, but uh, that is our thoughts. We want to use part of the $10 million. This letter was already submitted to the mayor. Um, doesn't mean that it's, it's, all, it's over, um, but it's a great suggestion. I see Michael Greer had his hand up. So if you wanted to comment on that. Thank you so much, council member. I, um, I am going to be speaking from some past knowledge that I know. Um, so uh, council member, uh, or excuse me, Commissioner White and I, uh, in my previous role at DBH, uh, when I was on the mayor's side after leaving the deputy mayor's office, uh, well, we've been working on this the whole time I was in the executive branch. This has been a conversation. And I would say starting out, um, I think it is great that we have uh, all of the initiative here and we're looking to move this clinic um, however, I would encourage everyone to take a step back before we uh, uh, look at kind of moving this clinic and first get the buy-in of the clinic. <laughs> um, this is a private business. Um, so real quick, we, we, yeah. we did get the buy-in of the clinic. Um, okay. they, they are, from what I've heard from them, they are open to the conversation of relocating. Yeah, and so I... Thank you so much. I'm glad uh, that they kind of are starting to move. So um, the last conversation I had when I was with uh, with them, they were saying, yes, we will move, but we don't want to pay anything for it. Um, and I I'll just tell you, um, hypothetically, if somebody ran the numbers um, for a move like that, uh, it might be somewhere around uh, $8 million <laughs> um, based on what they were kind of speaking to. Um, and what their demands would be if they were, again, hypothetically to move. And so it was a huge ask. And again, um, it sounds like there's been some motion in that direction. And Council Member White, um, again, my, it sounds like my information, uh, my hypothetical scenario, let me say it like that, is a bit out, outdated. But um, that was really one of the big uh, biggest barriers is first starting with how do we get the buy-in of the organization? And then um, how do we make it... Uh, again, an incentive for them to want to make that move and make that change. Um, but if, if, if we're already starting there, that sounds great. Um, and I personally am excited and would be more than willing in any capacity to help that move and help kind of work out um, that thought process. Um, again, in a previous life, I did have the opportunity to uh, talk to them about uh, some, of, uh, some of what it could possibly take. And again, hypothetically, if something were like that to happen, I think that uh, we would need a, need a good number, <laughs> um, a good number. And again, to Sheila's point, it could be through D that, that funding could go through DBH to move, that funding could go through D DGS to move, that funding could go through a number of agencies to move in order to get, uh, get them a location that um, might be more suitable for the community and ultimately suitable for those who need substance use disorder services throughout DC. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone. Um, and so we know that's an issue that animates many over in the in the Anacostia area, may not so much other parts of the ward, but certainly uh, we we know that that's something that you and others are fighting for. It sounds like the council member and his staff is also working on. Let's move to templates uh, because we do. We, you know, we're all here today to really talk about how you do this process of testifying, and I want to sort of jump into that right now. Um, you know, I was looking at a blog, came across a blog by the DC Fiscal Policy Institute, and they talk about how to testify effectively before the DC Council. And one of the things that they said, which I really thought was, was appropriate for here, which is to write your testimony, knowing what you want to say ahead of time can help calm your nerves. You heard Sheila talk about that a little bit earlier about rehearsing, practice, or I call it rehearsing, I'm from the arts world, uh, practicing. Um, and it will help ensure that you don't forget the important points that you want to make. And there's no need to memorize your testimony. You've heard folks say several times you can write your testimony out. 
And if you're using the voicemail feature, you could literally handwrite it <laughs> and just read from what you have in front of you and in your call. Um, and so there's no need to memorize it. And uh, you will read directly. You can read directly from your written version that you will submit. But also to Sheila's point, you want to make sure that you remember that as you're speaking for yourself, you have three minutes to hit those top items that you want them to know, that you want to be concise. Uh, and again, you want to watch the timer because they will cut you off. I testify and I usually go over, to be honest with you, to be fully transparent. Uh, some council members will cut you off, some a little nicer. The point, though, is you know you have three minutes if you're representing yourself. And the other piece that uh, was also reiterated, I want to reiterate another point, which is that your written testimony can, you know, that you submit to the council can be pages and pages. You can include examples, you can include evidence, you can include, you know, uh, hypotheses. I mean, all types of things can go in that, which will be helpful for the council as they make those decisions. But when you're speaking to them live and either in person or virtual, three minutes is what you must remember. And so it's important that you practice that uh, as, as you prepare. And so what I wanna do is show you. Mr. President, if you, they have one question, I think before you go to the template, and that's Ms. Lynch. Yes. Okay. Uh, good, good evening, Mr. Westwood. I uh, am listening to you, I'm taking um, notes. And um, I have been affiliated with Empower DC since about 2004. And um, back then, um, I had never even thought about um, testifying, but um, Parisa Noruzi, who is the executive director, she put a sandwich board up um, where my daughter was attending daycare, or yeah, daycare for lack of a better word. But, um, and so that planted the seed. Um, they also offered um, help with writing testimony which was very, very helpful. Um, I did attend one of them, but I was so busy being a single parent of three girls. I couldn't do the whole process, but it was helpful. And once I did that, once I decided I was gonna do that, once I got over my fear, the, re the way I got over my fear was, um, so the issue was su significant cuts on um, the childcare voucher program. And I, finally had to say, you know, agent, step up, you know, um, this is not only affecting your child, but this is a very important issue that's going to affect the large majority, majority of the women in our um, city. And I said, the issue is bigger than my fear. Mm -hmm. And I went in front of the DC council and I'm telling you, if I had known I was being filled, I probably wouldn't have done it, mm -hmm. but I went off script because I just talked about how my daughter progressed at three years old at this uh, center, which was in the building, um, um, the Woodner up on 16th Street. Uh, mm -hmm. My office was in another floor. They were housed, the child care development was downstairs. Um, within about three months, my daughter was uh, counting in Spanish from one to 10 at three years old. And so that, that was important. That just took over my fear, but I think, mm -hmm the assistance offering people who may you know want help and may not um be able to ask for help i would love to be able to help people get directed to getting that um written testimony grammatically correct and sentence structure and all of that especially if it's going to be submitted did you say you you help people you want to help people prepare i would like to because i've done it oh, cool. Yeah, please, like what you should do. And first of all, thank you for sharing your story. Thank mm -hmm. you for, for finding your why, right? That mm -hmm. goes back to how we started the conversation today yeah. is to tap into your why. Yeah, That will push you through fear. It will yeah. push you through Absolutely. Uh, any, any, any doubt in your mind about why you need to do what you're doing and who you're standing mm -hmm. up for. Because it's not mm -hmm. just your family, your child, your your community is for communities like yours that are too afraid to speak up. Mm -hmm. so you found your why and you you bought thousands with you, even though you were one person. So um, oh, if, go ahead. If you want to drop your information in the chat, go ahead and do that so people will see it and they can reach out to you as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I do one more thing. Okay. Um, during then, uh, Parisa was able to get um, a weekend hearing. So all the parents that wanted to testify could testify. The parents yeah. that were working, you know, she created a weekend. Adrian Fenty was on the council then. Okay. When he showed up, there were about 42 people to testify. He housed everybody's children in his office. Woo. Wow. But that, te- that hearing went through from a Saturday to Sunday evening. Right. And everybody got to speak. And everyone got to speak. That's wonderful. Awesome. And, and we also won, I think, about 15,000 more than what was being taken away from. So, yeah. yes, and yes. All because you you took a stand and, and you yeah. got engaged and got involved. Well, let me let me share with others what they can do to do the same thing that you did. And this is, uh, we want to make sure you get this too. We want to give everyone this template uh, that is in a shared folder. Um, because we think that this will help you. And so don't be intimidated by all the yellow. I'm going to walk you through it. But this is, uh, I'm going to see if I can show the whole thing. Okay, so that's the whole thing there. Uh, but you're going to fill in some information on this, right? And it's going to be really, really easy once I walk you through this. And so let's start at the top. This is, and listen, if you decide to do a voicemail hearing, again, you can handwrite all of this, but if you decide to submit it, this is the way, this is a, this is a way, this is a template that you can use. You can customize this the way you want. You can follow the prompts that we've put here, but you can also do it, you know, if you know another way, you can do it another way, or you can just verbatim take what we have here and include the information that will be helpful. You heard Michael say earlier that you can testify, you can use the same testimony before several committees, Mm -hmm. uh, especially if the committee uh, or the issue rather uh, is it's 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 multifaceted, meaning it covers multiple committees. Um, But (laughs) I do want to make sure you are aware that you must. It is important that you at least recognize that at the top of the header that you are changing the committee that you are submitting that information. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So they don't get confused oh, uh, that you meant to send it mm-hmm. somewhere else when it's with them. So again, this is a, a, a real easy template. You want to start at the top to say testimony of in your name before the DC council and then that particular committee. So there's committees, you know, all these different committees and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but you put it at the top there, make it nice and bold so people know it. Put the date on there and put the time on there as well. It's not as important, but the date is important. Uh, and, you know, if you're looking for a place to start, I always say, start with good morning or start with good afternoon. Uh, usually it'll be either morning or afternoon, not like quite what uh, uh, Miss Lynch talked about, how she, uh, you know, how there were people going in overnight. Uh, that would be a good evening if that's the case. But uh, you will certainly just start with start with the salu- the salutations, you know, this, hey, good morning, chairman or chairperson or chairwoman, uh, and then use the council member's last name. And then also recognize the other members of the committee. Uh, whenever, I re- whenever I testify, it might be a different chairman, but if my council member is on the committee, uh, I always make sure that I recognize my council member, for example. So I may say, dear, or oh, good, good afternoon, chairman, uh, who we have on the council now, Chairman Bonds, uh, and also members of the committee, including my council member, Council Member Trayon White as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Always do that, sir. You know, I always got you. Um, and uh, and then you go into who you are. What's your name? Um, and then you can talk about what, you know, that you are a resident. Maybe you're a property owner. Maybe you're a taxpayer. I've heard everyone use all types of uh, uh, descriptors for themselves. Um, you use the one that works best for you. I honestly, I say I'm a native Washingtonian, uh, but you can certainly say you are a resident of a particular community. You are a property owner, you're a taxpayer, you're a voter. Trust me, they hear you when you say you're a voter uh, who resides in a particular community or neighborhood. Put that all right there in, in, in early on so they know who you are and where you're coming from. And you can say there what you're talking about, what you're there to talk about, the issue that you care passionately about. Um, you know, in the case we just heard from Ms. Lynch earlier, it was around education. So she would say, I'm here to talk about 
I'm here to talk about, you know, the fact that we need more funding for this particular issue around education. You will put that right there up front. So there's no doubt about why you're there. And then I will move to the second paragraph, which will tell them your story. Say who you are. Uh, say, say why this is important to you. Um, you know, include the purpose and the nature of your concerns. You, you've, I, I thought you gave a great testimony earlier, uh, Ms. Lynch, about why it was important for you to be there and that you wanted to also not just talk about your own community or your own issue, which are, you know, the concerns you have around your child, but other people's children as well. Again, this is the old why. This is why you are here, why it matters to you. Put it right there. Put it bold so that people know uh, and, and, and they understand that this is why it's important to you. You then want to tell the council, I will use another paragraph and tell the council uh, what you would like to see happen in the budget on the concerns that you raised in your why. Um, you heard, I think it was, I think it was Rich earlier who said that um, you know you want to you want to offer solutions, right? Like you want to you want to say this is this is what I want to see happen um, in the in in the budget. I mean, you know, it's it's one thing to to complain, and you know, there's a there's a there's a reason for that. There's a place for that, but you you know, council members generally want to they want to fix things, and so the idea here is that maybe you have a solution they hadn't thought about. Or maybe you have a solution that they uh, been thinking about but haven't landed on. Well, you can help reiterate it in your testimony here. So this is a great place for you to, again, raise your concerns, and you can be brief, or you can be you can expand here as well. Uh, raise your concerns. If you worked with or you know of a particular organization or an agency that is benefiting from this particular funding and that can use more funding for this particular issue or uh, can benefit from more of the budget, that's where you wanna speak about that. You wanna put all of that really in the, the, the meat here in this chunk of, the, um, of, of, the, uh, of your testimony here. And then you wanna wrap it up because again, keep in mind that you really only have three minutes if you're gonna speak this if you're going to submit the written testimony, you can submit a longer piece. But even if you if you go multiple pages here, I would advise you to then pull out those those key points that Sheila talked about earlier. Those three or four takeaways, or maybe it's one takeaway that you want to make sure that you leave the council with, uh, in case you run out of time. And so, as you wrap up your thoughts, once you've raised your concerns and you've talked about, you know, the evidence and why it's important and, and the committee that needs the money, then you can go into, again, uh, thanking them in your conclusion. And once again, I always tell them in PR, I work in PR, I tell folks, tell them what you want to tell them, tell them a second time, and then tell them one more time. And this is your opportunity to once again state your why why you want to see this happen and what you want to see happen. This is your, your one last moment to tell them that uh, at the conclusion of your piece. Again, you told them one time, you told them three two times, and now you're going to tell them a third time. And then I'll say here at the bottom, this is just some, you know, some, uh, some guidance here. If you're testifying virtually or in person, let them know you're looking forward to answering any questions uh, you may have, uh, they may have. And again, you can say you. Um, uh, if you are testifying with a voicemail, you should let them know. In the beginning of it, you will spell out your name. Uh, you can also give your contact information there as well. But you want to make sure that you leave your contact information uh, in case they want to reach out to you. And so you can tell them that you can be reached on a phone number or on a particular email address if they have questions or if the staff has questions or something like that. So just two little quick notes here. If you're testifying virtually or in person, let them know you look forward to answering any questions they have after you've concluded your comments. And if you are doing it by voicemail, you want to leave a number and an email before you hang up. Keep in mind, and Sheila, if you're on or anyone from the council member's office, the voicemail system, does it tell you you have 10 seconds left or something like that? Or does it just hang up on you at three minutes? You know, honestly, I've never called the number, so I don't know. Me um, either. But uh, 
That's a good one. I'm going to call my committee's number now and we'll figure it out. Um, but every committee has a different number. I think you should stress that. Um, it's not the same number for um, every committee. Every committee has a different number. So please be sure to reach out to the committee's point of contact to find out that information. Yes. Anyone else know? Okay. Does anyone else know? Um, I know there's some systems, you know, when you leave no voicemail, it says you have five seconds left. That would be nice if it doesn't offer that hint, hint, wink, wink. But if it, if it, if it uh, doesn't, then you want to just, you want to time it so that uh, you don't get disconnected. Or what you want to do is top load your, uh, your voice message in the beginning, which is to say, hey, I am Troy Presswood, T-R-O-Y-P-R-E-S-T-W-O-O-D. Here's my email address or phone number if you want to reach me. If you want to add a phone number, you don't have to, but certainly an email address if you have it or a phone number if you want to use that instead. Uh, so you don't get turned, you don't get uh, disconnected because I, I, I hate when that happens and I'm sure you will too. And you'll be even more frustrated, which we don't want you to be. So this, te this template is for you. You will have access to this template. I want to make sure that not only you use it, if it makes sense to use it, use it. You can customize it, change it, format it the way you want to make it work. But I want you to make sure that your neighbors know how to access it as well. Make sure they can use it because you know there's somebody who is not on this call who should be. And maybe they've been complaining to, about something to you. And you're like, well, I don't know what to do. But now you do. And now you can tell them, here's what you can do in order for them to uh, make sure that their, their, uh, their voices are heard as well in the, in the overall process. Um, we, we had um, talked earlier about these upcoming meetings, uh, these, uh, these hearings that are coming up, these budget hearings that are coming up. Um, every committee has different information um, slightly different information and obviously times and ways that you can get the information as well. I, we have in our in our shared folder for you uh, a bunch of resources. We can go straight to the council's calendar and you can look at what's happening on a particular day and time. You can look at these dates and times, look at their date and times. So you can register and it tells you all about the process, how to leave a voice message, how to register uh, for those uh, budget hearings as well. So you can do a number, of, there, we do have the information in here for you so you don't feel like you are doing this in the blind. Uh, Friday the 24th, you heard uh, earlier that, you know, this is gonna be, the, the mayor will the day before is supposed to submit, transmit the budget to the council. And then the next day there will be a briefing from the mayor about her budget proposal and the mayor's staff. And that will be uh, before the committee of the whole chaired by Phil Mendelson. And then we start to get into these, these budget hearings, committee on public works and operations, committee on housing, uh, transportation and the environment. That's March 28th. Those meetings are coming up as well. Uh, chaired by Chairman Allen, uh, the Executive Administration and Labor. That's Anita Bonds. That's that's she's. I think that's new for her. And so you you could t it tells you here how to view that. Um, these should be live links. Although I don't think well, you know, they may be live links, but they're not live at the moment because it's not March twenty eighth. But you can you can uh, you know this is where you can get that information, or you can click on that calendar that we're going to give you that you can go and register and get the information that way as well. Committee on Public Works and Operations. We know that per, I know growing up in D.C., Public Works was the main uh, agency that did everything for everybody. Uh, it's not so much that anymore, but it's still a very important agency. Uh, Chairman uh, Nadeau is Chairperson Nadeau is over that committee, and and her hers uh, her committee meets on March the twenty eighth. Um, Council Member Kenya McDuffie, Business and Economic Development, very important committee for our ward. For example, March 29th. and so it goes on and on here. I don't want to belabor this, but you'll find if you're looking for the information on the dates. We have it here. This is the latest information from the council, although I do believe there's been a last minute change on uh, uh, operations or on, um, on uh, what is it, recreation and libraries. And I think her, uh, the council members team can communicate that to everyone in just a moment. Uh, Committee on Transportation and, and the Environment. That's coming up as well, as you see. So we have all of that information here. Committee on Recreation, Libraries and Youth Affairs. That's council member White. Uh, all of these agencies fall under uh, the council members 
committee here and they're meeting from noon until two o'clock on March 31st. I'll pause here in case there's been a change uh, on these dates and times to his team. Anyone, Rich, Kyle? I think Kyle, you mentioned it. No, or was it Rich? It was Cal. Okay, is he gone? No, no, no. I'm right here. The um, I I could I missed the last part you were saying. Oh, it was a change. You said there was a change. Oh yes, there's a change in um uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation. I'm hearing um has been moved to Wednesday, April fifth at noon. Um, we realized that it was scheduled for Good Friday, and so we moved it to Wednesday at noon. Oh, this is Good Friday. <laughs> well, no, when when um the April seventh. Was the origin was the date and oh, so, gotcha. okay, so from that day. yeah two days before gotcha okay. and everything else has been moved on the um the last time we saw the schedule most of the times were at three o'clock um all the hearings will be at noon except for serve dc which will start at three o'clock p.m okay. this is the one you're talking about here sir so this one is is on the calendar right now for april 7th but it's been moved up to wednesday the 5th is that correct yes correct at noon Gotcha. At yep. noon, same time. Same time. So I think the council will. Th that just happened today. So there will be a new document here. We will update. You can access this now, but just know that you come back tomorrow, the next day. This will be updated with the most recent mm -hmm. information. Uh, I think uh, uh, Wanda, uh, the the chief of staff, she is committed to making sure that we make sure that the the best information is in our shared folder. For mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Richard question. Rich, you had your hand up. Miss Lynch, I'll get you in one second, please. Okay. No, it was an error. I didn't mean to have my hand up. I apologize. Okay. Miss Lynch, you are mute. I'm thinking that um, the um, DC Housing Authority um, briefings and such um, would fall into some of this. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so if you saw earlier, we there is a committee. on. So the council member, uh, Robert White, is over housing. Yeah. OK. I can go back to that just to see what dates uh, we have on there. Um, if anyone knows, please jump. Yeah. In. It's March 10th. They moved it to Mar Monday, March 10th. OK. Mm -hmm. So okay. I didn't see it up there. That's an answer. Got it. <laughs> uh -huh. OK. All right, Sheila. Yes, um, what I was going to say, um, kudos for, to Wanda for agreeing to updating this budget um, document in terms of dates uh, for her, for the council members committee. But what I will say to folk is that um, please reach out to the committee that you want to testify before um, the council's um, calendar of events lags behind what a committee does. So the committee may change a date, but because the IT, our IT department handles the calendar, they may be slow in updating those dates on the council's website. So always double check um, with the relevant committee um, to ensure that those dates um, are still um, as listed on um, the council's website. I know the Committee on Health, they've had some changes in their um, hearing dates, but it's not yet reflected on the council's website. So just an FYI. Um, and then uh, Wanda had asked a question about the, count, the first and second votes on the budget by the council. I dropped that in the chat, um, but the first vote is May 16th and the second is May 30th, if those dates um, still hold. Yeah, I think those also, and I'm sorry, I'm sharing a different screen, but that's all the, it's in the, um, in the slides that will also be part of this folder as well that shows you uh, when the first vote and then the second vote will take place. Uh, if those dates hold, I, we got to make sure we preface it with that. I, I just want to very quickly, so this is what the folder looks like right now. We want to add a little bit more to it, but um, you'll get this before you log off today. Uh, and then, of course, they're going to be sent out as well. And so I just want to click on uh, this is something here about a guide to testifying. It's an, you know, some good information there. Take a look at that when you when, when you have time. Uh, I want to go here to resources for testifying before the council, though. 
Uh, and um, so we just put everything in an easy to find format where you can go, you can find a meetings and hearing schedule, budget timeline and oversight hearing schedule, list of important dates, uh, that uh, that article I told you about from the Fiscal Policy Institute is something that you can uh, check out as well. Uh, here's our contact information info at wateddems.com. Um, Richard, who is the uh, legislative director for Councilman Tran White, his information is right here. And then you heard Sheila talk about the committees. And so each of these are links to the committees. Yeah, I was going to make sure both of their, their working links and phone numbers. So you can go right and click on any of these committees and go straight there to get the latest information about hearing dates, if there's any changes that may happen. Of course, to uh, sign up uh, to testify, you'll be able to hear that, uh, get that here by clicking on these links or calling them if if that's what you so choose. Um, and we want we anticipate adding more information to this as well. So again, this is gonna be a live document that we'll continue to add more as more come in. Uh, but I want to make sure you know what's in the folder that we want to share with you uh, momentarily. So I'm going to pause there. I know that we are pretty much at time, if not a little bit over time, to see if there's any questions that we can ask. I hope that while, while we've been talking and you're getting all this information, uh, that you've been thinking about your why, if you haven't been thinking about it already. And of course, if there's any questions that we can answer for you, uh, we want to do that now before we uh, dismiss. And so, Wanda, I'll turn it over to you in case there's any questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Ms. Lynch, let's see if there's any other questions, Ms. Lynch, before we okay. come. Back. Give me just a second, just to make sure we want to capture everyone with the last minutes that we have. Um, if there are no other questions, um, go ahead, Ms. Lynch. Um, Thank you. Um, I do apologize. I think I got um, uh, logged into the meeting about maybe uh, 15 minutes late. So I know I missed some things. Um, but my notes that I took originally were regarding um, the Wheeler Road area and um, my suggestions for CCTVs um, and speed cameras, like we're you know, going towards the Maryland line from like Mississippi. Um, I live up that area. I've been almost hit with walking my dog like three times. That's just at one intersection. It's about the same at another intersection. Speed cameras up there, like Wheeler, and, and I know it borders Maryland, so I don't know how that works, but that was my main concern um, coming into the meeting. Thank you so much. I know the mm -hmm. council member put several thousand dollars in the budget last year. And Cal, if you remember, I think there are 68 cameras that was placed that were placed in Ward 8. I don't remember that exact number, but based on that, um, and we have the list. If you want to email me, I'll drop my contact in. If you want to get that list, I'm happy to share that with you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Just, um, send your contact or give us a call tomorrow and we can get that to you. Awesome. I'll do that because I know there's not one where I'm talking about. So, okay. okay. Well, that's that's your why. That's yes. your that's, that's your right. new why. That's, that's your new right. why when you that's testify. Right. Yes, ma'am. Right. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions before we wrap up? If not, Council Member White, do you have any closing remarks? I just want to thank everyone. I think this meeting was a fantastic dialogue. Um, some great insight. I was happy to hear Ms. Lynch talk about her experience in a personal manner and what she had to advocate, not just for her, but for other people. And that's really what it's all about us finding our common unity. I want to thank uh, uh, the Ward 8 Democrats, uh, who is always on the front line advocating for justice and inclusion um, in the democratic process. Uh, I think that, that we have some work to do. Um, I, I want to thank Michael Greer specifically for giving that email saying he's going to help people uh, who can reach out to him who want to testify. We, we don't know who all is going to testify, but if you need additional help from us, we want to be supportive of what uh, the Ward 8 Democrats is doing also from our office. Um, so I want to thank you, uh, uh, Troy Presswood, Sheila Bunn, my staff. My staff sometimes go unnoticed. I, I apologize for that, but they have been on the call. They're engaged in all these hearings that's happening at the council and my committee and others. Um, there's some valid points that we want to raise even as we fight for equity and inclusion. Um, and $20 billion that's rightfully owed to the residents and citizens of Ward 8 and across the district. So I'm um, excited that we uh, started this conversation tonight. 
but please know that we still have to get down to City Hall or on the Zoom or in the email or on the voice to make our voices heard. Um, we have over 85,000 residents in Ward 8, and so we have to do better at advocating for ourselves. Um, uh, that's really all I have. I want to thank you, Wanda and staff, um, for joining us tonight. Everyone, um, happy Women's History Month. Have a great evening, everyone. Before you dismiss. Oh, uh, yes, I'm so sorry, Mr. President. Kudos to you, sir. That's, that's okay. I know, you, I know you're used to, you know, running everything for the council members, so I'm sorry. Uh, just wanted to just share this final slide here, which is how to contact us. Uh, you see the council member's office information is there. And for all of us over at the Ward 8 Democrats, really there's just one easy way to get us. And that's at info at ward8dems.com. Uh, you heard Michael, you heard the council member say what Michael said earlier is that you can reach out to us there and we will, you know, that inf we all have access to the same email. So it'll, it'll, it'll filter to the right people and we're happy to help you with the information. Uh, I did see there was a, uh, I, for some reason, I'm unable to copy uh, text out of the, um, out of the chat. But I did see that A. Hatcher, she had uh, asked for us to email her a copy of the um, of of the template. And for some reason, as I'm trying to copy and paste it, oh, it worked. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, got you. Uh, uh, Hatcher, we got you. We will send that to you directly so you'll have it so you don't have to go through a lot of hoops. And then again, I know that the council member's office will send this out as well. Uh, I do want to just also... Uh, Thank the council member for all of his efforts and his staff and thank my my team, uh, Sheila Bunn and Michael Greer for their efforts as well. Uh, thank you also to Wanda Lockridge for all of your work uh, being a hybrid between the both of us. <laughs> and uh, thank you all. And again, we are here to help. We want to help. This is your award. This is your voice that we wanna ensure is heard by those who make these decisions. So let us know how we can best help you and we will do it. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good budget meeting. Good night. Great Good meeting. Night. How are you?